This is a 3D model of a concept that I did a while back of a general store that you would use in a sort of a RPG game. So in this case, I'm trying to replicate the style used in League of Legends and World of Warcraft of the hand-painted style texture. And uh, I'm using that to create a new texture for a model, which I've already done a pixelated texture for, and I've done an isometric pixel art version. Uh, so it's pretty much a, a really cool model because there's a few, there's a lot of colors in the model. There's a lot of details. I do reuse a lot of the meshes, so, um, but also I reuse a lot of the textures and you'll see me doing that quite a lot. Like right now, I've just replicated that piece of texture, which I think came out good enough, and then I add detail to it. So it's pretty much a, a, the process of starting with a, a darker tone and then gradually adding light. I find that that is more comfortable than starting with light and adding shadow gradually, unless it's, for example, like a cast shadow in a situation like this. Usually when I add the shadow is to justify a line in the object. So in this case, it's the space in between the wood planks or a cast shadow on an object. But if I'm starting with a flat surface that is going to have volume, I'd much prefer to, to start working from a, a base color and then gradually add light. In this case, you can see me add the light in the end because that's what I think is going to sell the volume of the object, not necessarily the, the detail of the object. That's what the shadows usually do because shadows are more present in lines and brights are more present in, um, in flat surfaces or actually in just plain surfaces. So again, I'm copying and pasting some of the, uh, the tones uh, from the wooden pillars from one side to the other because I know they're, they're going to be very similar. In this case, I can hardly see because the video is sped up. This, this took about an hour to do. Uh, the video is so sped up, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do an ambient occlusion shadow on the part where the roof meets the middle beam, like the big beam on the roof of the house. Um, I do a lot of work with selections. Uh, that red axe was just to find what part of the mesh was that part of the texture, because uh, even though I, I recognize the texture from a previous, uh, previous texture job that I did, um, I had forgotten a few of the things. I added a bit of texture there for the Adobe Adobe wall or daub wall, um, just to have it some cracks and, and some bumpiness to it. Uh, but basically, I prevented myself from using darker tones of the color used in the wall because that tends to look a little more dull. And in this case, I want it to be vibrant and warm, so I used a saturated color for the shadow. Uh, this is just a window trying to add a cast shadow there to push the window in, and then using a tiny white line around the bottom edge just to get some uh, caustics and some refraction from the window. This is the piece of the cloth. I'm going to use something that I don't use very often nowadays, which is the dodge and burn tool. I'm going to use it now to actually just brighten that up almost like if it was the sun color. The the light from the sun directly from the sun has a tendency to burn colors up. So it's, it's probably the only situation when dodge and burn uh, can be used in a non-destructive way, so to speak. Again, this is me kind of figuring out what parts of the mesh are, what parts of the texture, because there's a few things here I don't remember. And some of the parts of the texture are very similar, like very, a lot of rectangles are pretty much the same. This is just me um, reusing parts of the texture that I know are the same material, so I don't have to be painting them again, because that just takes time. Obviously, you don't want the texture to be exactly the same, like if there's a nook in the wood or if there's any kind of uh, crack in a texture, you want to make sure that that doesn't look exactly the same, otherwise it's going to be obvious. Uh, what you did. Uh, in this case, for the sign, I did a quick a lasso selection, a freehand lasso selection, and painted that color in, and then adding the darker rim around it to make sure, like, to make uh, an idea that it was carved in into the wood. Now, the, the door, the green door only really came up in the 3D model, because in the concept, I think I left a gray door in, and I really like the green door in the model, because it stands out so much from the rest of the house. It's the only green thing that pops up and so I added later on I add that as a way to do curtains for um, for the window of the shop for the shop window actually in some cases and because the pixelated version uh, didn't have that much resolution in some cases parts of the texture are actually upside down and I didn't even notice so right there I just twisted that uh, upside down so this is me adding a blurry version of the curtains so that I can make it look like they're inside of the glass. Adding the reflection there didn't work because it, it was very static. If you add that reflection, then once you rotated the model, it would be obvious that that was a painted on reflection. So I just left it without the reflection. This is me adding the planks on the barrels, uh, which are next to the house. Uh, I think the top of the barrel came out very uh, too noisy. I don't think it came out that well. 
but the barrels, the, then the metal rims and everything, which is kind of okay. So this is the complete model, and I'm going to show you the concept for it in a bit so you can see the similarities. Here's the concept. There's a bit more depth in the concept and a lot more texture, uh, some saturation as well. But again, it's, uh, it's just the fact that it's harder to do in a 3D object. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Take care.